Last week, I was invited by Prime Video to attend an event in Austin, Texas, where we got to explore a mock-up of the scrap city, Philly, from the upcoming Fallout TV show. I published a short going over some of the highlights, but there's a great deal that I couldn't cover. Here's the full experience. Philly first opened up to us at night. We entered through the wreckage of an airplane fuselage and were greeted by a giant flaming Fallout logo. There was a billboard directly above the town promoting the upcoming show and pointing to the scrap town Philly. It was a bustling event. There were dozens of people there, journalists, developers, YouTubers, influencers, and celebrities. In the middle of the town was a restaurant, similar to Takahashi's noodle shop in the middle of Diamond City. Here they had clips from the TV show playing on old televisions, a replica of a Mr. Handy bartender, and they were serving drinks, including the Jones Soda Nuka-Cola Victory. There were tables scattered around Philly, and they were decorated with a lantern, which looked a lot like the railroad lantern. I thought that was a nice touch. Some of the cast and crew were there as well. We got to talk to and take photos with Aaron Moten, who plays Maximus, a Brotherhood of Steel squire, and Walton Goggins, who plays the Ghoul. Todd Howard was there. I briefly got to talk to him. And Elon Musk showed up for some reason. But the highlight of the night for me were all of the actors they hired to roleplay residents of Philly. They wouldn't talk to you out of character, which was a lot of fun. There was a barber slash dentist who tried to buy my teeth. I uh, might be interested in a haircut. A haircut, okay, yeah. well we can do that, but our specialty is dental extraction. We just do the haircut so it's kind of side thing. I see, so dental extraction. Absolutely. What about other surgery? I might need like an additional limb. An additional what? Limb. Oh, limb, oh sorry, I can't help you there. Can I help with third limbs? No. What about no, facial strictly, reconstruction? Strictly dental, strictly dental. Just dental, just dental, okay. Sorry, yeah. Well. I mean, we got a great collection of samples. Oh my god, you do! <laughs> now, we have we have some really good business recently. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Uh, what do you do for, you know, like sanitary cleanup? Is that, oh, we got the Barbasol right over here. Is that Barbasol? Yep. Barbicide, right? Barbicide. Yeah. The teeth are soaking in it, right? Yeah. You've got thought of everything, everything, haven't you? Wow. I'm I'm impressed. I'll tell you what, if I ever get a pain in my tooth, you're the man I'm gonna see. Then there was Ma June's Sundries, a little general store. This, I think, is the same general store we see in the trailer for the Fallout TV show, but Ma wasn't there tonight. It was somebody else. Walking inside, we find a bunch of pre-war stuff, including a variety of televisions and computers, broken electronics, and all sorts of goodies. The lady at the register seemed to be confused by my recording device. Sir, I don't know what you're doing, but we're here to buy and sell. We're not here for you to take a photo. What, what is this? Is I'm, taking, I'm just taking inventory. I want to know what merchants in the wasteland have for wow, sale. Wow, this is, what is that? I will then go promote your wares out. What is this? This is like a special microphone for recording uh, what I see. That's, that's all it is. I found it off of a robot wreckage. Trust me, it's only going to help you with sales. I will be back with many more customers. Huh. Me customer, you money, lots. <laughs> My attempt at humor fell flat, sadly, but she had a number of wonderful items on display behind a glass cabinet. We'll get a better look at them later. There was a Brahmin lassoing station, and as I was recording it, the mayor of Philly stopped by to make sure he could secure my vote. I'm the mayor of this town. Are you the mayor? Uh, my father. Uh, my name is Gary. Gary, the mayor? Yeah. I'm Brandon. It's good to be here. Brandon? Brandon. Brandon? No, I mean, have you not been here before? It's my first time in Philly. Oh, you are welcome. If there's something I need, let the mayor know. I'll see if I can make it happen. Well, I'm impressed by the hygiene. How would one become a citizen of Philly? You just stick around. You just stick around, really? Yeah. Okay. Really? I think if you vote, especially for the mayor, especially for me for mayor, for you. you'd probably be a citizen. Okay. Yeah. What about accommodations? What if I want my own shack? We all just kind of crawl under things as needed. Okay. So there's more room. There's room. There's room, yeah. yeah. Okay. What about food? Do you guys give out food? Do I have to catch it? What are the yeah. rules? Well, catching it is an option. Always you often can buy it. It's always for sale for bottle caps. So if we get you some bottle caps, do you have bottle caps? I did get some bottle caps, okay. yeah. And you can get more by going to the dentist. He'll take your teeth and give you bottle caps. Oh, bottle caps That's a teeth. finite resource. Yeah, it is, yeah. But he'll give you a lot of them. Yeah, they're in a pinch. Yeah. 
I've done it a couple times. I can see, yeah. He doesn't even hurt, really. Really? Okay. He's got something that he does. Always an option. Uh, so stick around. I'll be happy to have you become a citizen. And I hope you vote for me. I will. I will. Good to meet you, man. He and many of the other actors were handing out bottle caps. I thought they were just collectibles, but they actually have some significance, which we'll talk about in a little bit. They played the same trailer that I published on my channel a few days ago, and then they showed us the first seven minutes of the first episode of the show. All it did is amp me up for the show. I got so excited. There was a peddler walking around with a bunch of cups. She was trying to con people out of money. She cheats. Lucky, if I win, can I have that? No. If I win, you give me that thing. No, you can look at it. There was an arms dealer with a real-life junk jet. It wasn't operational that night, but I did get a chance to fire it, which we'll talk about later. There was also a full suit of T-60 power armor being guarded by a squire. Apologies for the quality of this footage. It was night, and I was shooting this all on my phone. Squire, sir, right. but my knight will be back soon. All right, well, I won't keep you then. Just gotta take all of this in. We drank and made merry. I had so much fun with all of the other Fallout YouTubers and TikTokers and influencers that I met there. Awesome memories were made. The next morning, we were invited back. You see, they were getting ready to open up Philly to the public, but they wanted to give us an opportunity to explore the full experience before they opened it up. There was already a line outside when we arrived. In the daytime, it was a bit less crowded, which was nice, but it didn't stay that way for long, and so I tried to make good use of the time I had. I loved the signage, the posters, and all of the props that we found. I found out later that many of the props that were used to decorate Philly were actually used in the show. In the daytime, there was a stand handing out Fallout-themed neckerchiefs or scarves. They came in orange, blue, and yellow. Oh, great. Um, I think I'll take yellow, please. Okay, you can just grab it, huh? I chose a yellow one. There was a shady salesman selling contraband items beneath his trench coat. During the daytime, I got a better look at some of the goods on display in Mom's shop. Many of these items we're going to be able to buy once they're available. Some of them are on pre-order. Some are already sold out. We see a version of the Pip-Boy that's used in the show. The Pip-Boy in the show is a new Pip-Boy. It's not the same as any of the other Pip-Boys from the games that we've experienced. It's much more industrial. There was a model vertebrae and a bunch of models from McFarlane Toys. But the same lady was working behind the counter and I tried to take credit for bringing in all these people. Well, Ma, I told you I'd bring more people. Look at it, see, I said I'm not here today. Oh, okay. Well, my applause. I met her last night, and I assume yeah, you did meet me. She was Ma. Well, I'm glad you're here. No, I see Ma Jones. This is Maggie. Maggie June is not here. Yeah. Okay. So we're running the shop for. Her. Oh, that's nice of you. Yeah. Well, uh, we the, do every. We have very nice people. You seem very, well. Very. Last night you didn't want me recording with my fancy device. I know. Device. I know. I know. But but you do seem nice. So there's a bunch of pre-war items out in Philly, and I'm looking for them. We're always in the market. Pre-war items. Pre-war items. You find them. You bring them back to me and I'll give you bottle caps. All right, yeah. sounds good to me. I'll keep an eye out. Yeah. <laughs> you found any uh, you found any artifacts? Uh, not yet. I, I didn't realize I was looking for them. So yes. I'm going to go. They're all over Philly. Do you have anything all over Philly. All over Philly. Okay, I'll keep an eye out. Perfect. Okay. She told me that there's a scavenger hunt going on. We had to find pre-war artifacts scattered all over Philly. Well, the Fallout player and me immediately took to the scent. In a corner of Philly, I found a pre-war toaster. This seemed to catch the attention of somebody else, but he didn't grab it. And so I did, with toaster in hand, feeling very proud of myself. I showed it off to Mr. and Mrs. Fallout. I found a toaster, yeah. Awesome. I don't know if I'm supposed to. She said 
she's hunting for pre your perfect. Toaster? I found it outside. I'm, go I'm gonna go turn it in and see if I get credit for it. I don't get to keep it. Um. No. With toaster in hand, I proudly walked into Ma's shop to present the goods. Right. Did you find any of the lot for me? Does this count as a pre-war item? Unfortunately not. You have a list of items on your device. But this is a, it's a toaster. It's a, it's right. Okay. Uh, well, I guess it's not a... One of those shiny blue suits should have shown you these, these where we're look, what we're looking for. Everywhere. I got the wrong pre-war item. All right. I'll, I'll go back and check. We have a specific list okay. on that fancy little device that you have. All right. If um, you check your device, you so you'll much. find them. I'll check it out. Thank you very uh -huh. much. Okay, and so here's the, the thing. Apparently, this was designed for the public, and when they brought us in, they didn't really explain to us the rules of the scavenger hunt. No one in a vault suit told me what was going on, but apparently, when we walked in, we got access to a website that they created just for this event. On the website was a list of pre-war items that we had to find, and when we found them, we didn't pick them up. No, we were supposed to scan a QR code that was sitting next to it. Sure enough, as I began walking around, I found these QR codes next to an old radio, next to a Vault-Tec bobblehead. I found a really cool safe. It didn't really look like any of the safes from the game, but still, it's really cool. And next to it was an old model car with a QR code. There was even a garden gnome with a QR code. There were 11 items in all, and I'm happy to say that I found them all. But sadly, the payoff isn't that exciting. After going back to Ma and showing her that I found all the items, she simply entered me in a raffle. And remember those bottle caps that I said they were handing out earlier? We could have given them to her to get more entries into the raffle. I don't think I won because I never heard back. Someone told me that the prize was a Fallout-themed Xbox, but I don't really know. Still, I'm just glad that I found all the items. Getting a look at the restaurant in the daytime revealed even more details. There was rad scorpion meat, bloat fly meat, rad roach meat, just lying out. They had a little crate of various other foodstuffs, including iguana on a stick, which if you know what it really is, is disturbing. All of this looked really gross. Ugh, especially those greenish meat blobs at the bottom. <laughs> Someone in Philly was a Homestar Runner fan. I found a little Trogdor the Burninator on a stop sign with consummate Vs. And in the morning, the arms dealer was active. We could line up to fire the junk jet. It was a popular attraction. There was a long line. Eventually, I got in the line. I had to give my phone to somebody to record me shooting it, and she decided to take a selfie with my phone. Thank you very much. Take one of these for your troubles. Thank you. It hit more than something. It hit the target. That's right. I got good aim. I've been practicing. The actress from the show came by again to walk around and talk with us. Aaron was working on Lasso and a Brahmin. I'm by the way. I mean, I can't say I would have done any better. I think they were filming a behind-the-scenes promotional thing because Walton and Aaron went on a tour of every little destination in Philly, and they had a camera crew following them. Then I found a ghoul in a cage. It's a ghoul in a cage. Are you feral? You look feral. What happens if I get you close? You are very convincing. I I'm going to stand back a little bit. All right. I hate to make you hungry. Good to meet you, ghoul. Apparently, he was the pet of this raider guy who was walking around the town. There were a couple of raiders, and they tried to steal your bottle caps from you. So yeah, I tried to avoid them. After we got our fill of Philly, we left and they opened it up to the public. I hope that lots of people got to explore the town just like I did. It was so cool seeing a universe that I love being translated into the real world and so many people just walking around and enjoying it. So there you go, that's my tour of Philly. Many thanks to Prime Video for inviting me down. I still have a bit more to say about my trip. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more.